Hi, I'm Connor Houghton, and this is Lecture 3 in the Information Theory section of our unit, uh, Information Processing in the Brain. Here I'm going to be talking about the, the joint entropy and the condition entropy. In the next lecture, I'll talk about the mutual information. If there are those among you, I don't know if there are, but if there are those among you who felt the first lecture uh, didn't have enough equations, you'll be happy with this one. It has a fact ton of them. It's going to seem maybe a little dry uh, because I'm just introducing uh, some definitions and giving a few examples, simple examples of calculating them. But if, if you do go on to use information theory to study neuroscience or machine learning, whatever, you'll quickly see that these quantities, the joint and conditional information, the mutual information in the next lecture, and the quantities based on them are, are quite beautiful. They're very delicate. They're very subtle. They work in ways that you don't quite expect at first. So uh, I do hope you'll, um, you'll learn to love uh, the joint uh, and conditional entropy. So uh, the Shannon's entropy that we introduced the first time around, H of X, it was the entropy of a single variable. Typically, when we use information theory, we want to do the relationship between two or more random variables. And so that's the business uh, of today and uh, also of the mutual information lecture. Uh, so the first definition, the joint entropy, really isn't a new definition. It's the same definition we had before, the definition for the Shannon's entropy, but applied uh, to a particular uh, probability distribution, the joint probability distribution. So if we have two random variables, x, uh, x and y, x will have a set of outcomes, x1 up to xn, y will have a set of outcomes, y1 up to ym. We can form the, the joint space, the Cartesian product, the set space of pairs, x, i, y, j, uh, that if that has a probability, if that set of expanded set of outcomes has a probability distribution on it, if that's the joint probability distribution, P of xi comma y, <coughs> yj, excuse me, so P of xi comma yj is the probability of getting the outcome xi and uh, the probability of getting the outcome yj at the same time. So it's the probability that x will produce xi and y will produce yj. The joint entropy is what we get if we use that as the probability distribution in the uh, Shannon's entropy definition we had before. So as I said, it's nothing new. Uh, before uh, we had a, a probability distribution on uh, the outcomes for x. Now we have the, um, the run variable x come away, y, the random variable made out of the random variables x and y. And so it's just the same thing. It's just a probability distribution, albeit the probability distribution on uh, the, 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 joint, the joint space. And so we just substitute in the probability distribution with the probability mass function we have, and we get that the joint entropy h of x comma y is the minus the expected value of the log of uh, p of x i comma y j, or minus the sum over the possible outcomes i comma j of um, p of x i comma y j log p of x i minus y j. So as I said, nothing new there. Quick example. Uh, so here's a simple um, probability table. Uh, the probability of getting uh, x1 and y0 is a quarter. The probability of getting x0 y1 is a half. It's impossible to get x0 and y1 together. They have a probability zero. And so uh, we can just use those probabilities in the formula to get the joint entropy. So h of x over y is minus uh, a half times the log of a quarter. So that's made up of the two uh, minus a quarter log of a quarter is minus a half log a half. And uh, the log to base two of a quarter is minus two. The log to base two of a half is minus one. Put all that together and you get three over two. That was the joint uh, entropy. Now we're going to talk about the conditional entropy. And before we do that, we'll recap conditional probabilities. So the conditional probability uh, P of xi given yj, that's the probability of getting what xi given th that uh, the value for y is yj. So depending on how you think about probability distributions, uh, you can imagine that's the probability that the experiment x will yield xi given you know the result of the experiment y. Uh, you know that that's um, yj. So uh, it's always hard to think of examples off the top of your head without immediately going to you know, uh, weights and heights and so on, and that can be a bit annoying. Um, say it's, uh, say, uh, xi is the length of a, a, a song in, in minutes, and uh, yj is the genre. Uh, sorry, y is the genre. 
So if you knew that the so uh, P of X, Y is you, you, you turn on the radio, you hear a song, uh, uh, you record how long it is in minutes and its genre, uh, that pair uh, is the uh, outcome. Uh, P of X comma Y is the probability that you'll get. So say X was X, I was three minutes uh, and uh, Y was, um, I don't know, um, folk ballad, uh, then uh, P of three minutes comma folk ballad would be the probability that the song would be uh, what we're calling three minutes long, so between three and four minutes long and, uh, and, and a folk ballad. So that would be a pretty small probability. Whereas, you know, if the genre was um, thrash metal, uh, where the songs tend to be very uh, short, then P of um, two comma thrash metal would be quite high. Uh, but the important thing is that if you know the genre, if you know it's thrash metal, you know that the probability for low values of X will be high. Whereas if you know the genre is folk ballad, then the probabilities for higher values of X will be high. That's the uh, condition of probability. Sorry about the crappy example. Uh, the important thing is this formula. It's a very simple formula. It makes a lot of intuitive sense. I'll go through the intuitive sense in a second, but it's a formula relating the joint probability and the condition probability. And depending on how you're building up your uh, probability theory can serve as the definition of the conditioned, conditional probability. Uh, so as I said, it, 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 it makes a lot of sense. It, it says that the probability of getting X and Y together is the probability that you get XI given that you've got YI multiplied by the probability that you got YI. So in short, um, it says that the probability of getting Y and then given that you've got Y getting X is equal to the probability of getting X and Y together. That makes a lot of sense, but uh, despite being simple and sensible, uh, this formula it turns out to be extremely useful in all sorts of calculations. It is, for example, uh, the formula at the heart of Bayes' rule. Uh, you can also, as I said, it does uh, serve as a part of the, uh, as one way of defining conditional probability, and it certainly gives you a way of calculating it. So the conditional probability uh, of xi given yj is the uh, joint probability of getting xi and yj together, together divided by the marginal probability of getting yj. And so that thing at the bottom is what we're calling the marginal probability. It's the probability um, of getting y if you uh, aren't interested in x, or as it's written down here, this is the marginal probability for x. So it says the probability of getting xi is just the sum over all possible y outcomes uh, of the probability of getting xi and yj. So you don't care what the j value is, so you just sum it out. And so the marginal probability is the way of getting the probabilities for one of the two um, uh, random variables from the joint distribution. And you can see the marginal probability appears in the form of the condition probability as a kind of normalizing factor on the bottom. So that's a probability distribution, the, con the conditional probability. So in the conditional probability, you've decided, so we're doing everything where you're conditioning on y and x is the variable that's you know, left undecided, as it were. Um, that, that, that's just for convenience that we're always doing that way. You can do the same thing and define the conditional probability of y conditioned on x. But let's stick to uh, x conditioned on y for now. This thing is, I'm going to call the conditioned entropy. The expression conditional entropy, we're going to look at the conditional entropy in a minute, is universal. The conditioned entropy, uh, some people call it this, some people don't. It's not It's not that important an object. Uh, well, the important object is the conditional entropy that we'll see in a minute, but it's useful in defining the conditional entropy and in understanding it. So the important thing is that um, we have the set of outcomes for uh, x, x1 to xn, for example, and the conditional probability, condition on y equals some yj, that's a probability distribution on that set of outcomes. So, you know, it might be the one that we first think of. The one we first think of would be the marginal distribution at P of Xi. But P of Xi, given Yj, is a perfectly respectable probability distribution on the, on the, on the Xi's, on the set of outcomes for X. And so we can just, in the usual way, substitute that into the um, formula for Shannon's entropy, put that distribution in the, in the slot where distributions go, and we get this formula here. A h of x condition on y equals yj is just the, um, the expected value 
over the marginal distribution over the conditional distribution of the log of the conditional distribution. So this is the entropy of x if we know the value of, of y. So we've, we've, we've done the experiment with y, and then we're asking how much uncertainty is there in, in x. And that thing uh, is quantified by the Shannon's entropy of that distribution, the distribution of x, given that we know y. You can work it out for our previous uh, example. So our previous example, there's a table um, with the condition on y equals y0. If we know that y is equal to y0, then from the formula that we saw a second ago, uh, this formula there, uh, we can work out uh, the uh, probability of x0 and x1. You can sort of guess it just by squinting at the table too. And you can see that in this uh, simple but Very contrived example. Um, the uh, conditional probability uh, for x given y equals y0 is that x0 uh, and x1 are equally probable. They both have probability half. Conversely, the conditional probability uh, when y is equal to y1 is that x0 has probability 1 and x1 has probability 0. In other words, if you know that y is equal to y1, you know that x has to be equal to x0. And just by putting these probability uh, distributions into the formula, we can work out um, uh, the two condition probabilities. So the h of x condition on y equals to y0. Well, you know, this is this extreme case that we discussed the last day, uh, where um, the, there, there's maximum uncertainty. Basically, we're completely uncertain but when we go to do the x experiment, given that we've done the y experiment, and we found out that y is equal to y0, we have no knowledge of what the result of the x um, experiment is going to be because each of the two outcomes is equally likely. And so the condition probability there is 1, the log of the number of outcomes, which is 2. Whereas the um, other case, the blue case, is the opposite. Once we know that y is equal to y1, uh, then we know that x0 has to be equal to 1 and y and, and x1 can't occur. So there's no remaining uh, uncertainty uh, in, in, in the value of the x variable. In other words, having done the y experiment and found that y is equal to y1, uh, we won't learn anything. There's no information left in the x experiment. And to form the entropy, if you calculate it, and you calculate in calculating it, the usual thing happens when you're getting all, all zeros or all ones, you end up with, um, with the entropy to be equal to zero. Good. So that's the <coughs> conditioned uh, entropy. I mean, um, conditional entropy uh, is um, a more important object, as I said before. That was all very special. That told us if I do the uh, y experiment and I get y1, what's the remaining entropy? But I think that we're, we're more likely to want to know in proving theorems or working out quantities of interest as objective functions, etc. It is is the more general thing, which is. Uh, Taken from the perspective of not knowing y, I say, I don't know x or y. I imagine I'm going to uh, learn the value of y. What will my entropy uh, in x be like then on average? So I'm not asking, I'm not saying I've, I've, I've done, I've, I've learned the value of y and the value of y is, you know, y zero. Now what's the entropy? I, I'm saying I'm going to be doing the, uh, I'm going to be looking at the value of y. When I've done that, um, from my perspective of not knowing what y is, what will I expect the entropy in x to be? So it's the average entropy in x uh, after finding out the value of y averaged over the probabilities of, of the different y's. In other words, it's the expected value over the distribution for y of the conditioned uh, prob uh, entropy, the entropy conditioned uh, on, on y. So that's the, the conditional entropy. And this is just saying the same thing again. It tells us how much information there is in X on average, if you know Y, where we're averaging over the possible out outcomes of knowing Y. Uh, this calculation, I'm not going to go through it in detail. You should uh, do it yourself quickly. It, it, it's not hard, but 
it makes sure that you make should make sure that you know uh, what's happening with these probabilities. Uh, this is just another formula for the conditional probability, an equivalent formula, obviously, but one that's uh, usually quite useful. So what we're going to be doing is we're substituting for the formula for the condition entropy. So we have the formula for the condition entropy uh, back here. Uh, and so we can put that in, in the top line where we have the condition entropy. So the top line, uh, we're averaging out over the outcomes uh, of the uh, yj. So we're averaging over the j. The conditioned entropy, if you remember, uh, we got by um, basically averaging uh, the log of the condition probability, uh, conditional probability over the x outcome. So that's the sum over j. So when we put them both in, we get this middle line, h of x given y is equal to minus the sum over the x outcomes and the, and, and the y outcomes of uh, p, y of y, j. That's the thing in the top line. And then the rest of it there is the um, sum and in the formula uh, for the conditioned entropy. So it's uh, p of xi given yj by the log of p of xi given yj. And then the thing to notice is that first term, the one that's multiplying the, the log, uh, that's, the, that's the joint entropy. So making that substitution, uh, we get the blue formula. So it tells us that the conditioned entropy is the expected value of the log of the conditional probability, sorry, the conditional entropy is the minus the expected value of the log of the conditional probability where we're doing the expectation over the joint entropy. So it's minus the sum of uh, P of Xi comma YJ multiplied by the log of P of Xi given YJ, the expected value minus the log of the conditional entropy uh, where you've done the expectation over the joint entropy. So the interpretation is that uh, h of x uh, given y, the condition entropy, is the average amount of information still in x when we know y. So uh, h of x, y equals yj is the amount of information still in x when we know y. Uh, h of x given y, the conditional entropy, is the average amount of information still in x when we know y. It has nice properties and it has the uh, properties that you'd expect it to have given that, that interpretation. So the first thing to note is uh, what happens if the x and y are independent. So if x and y are independent, it means that we can factorize the joint probability. The probability of x and y is just the probability of x multiplied by the probability of y. Um, and uh, equivalently, um, you know, if you, if you uh, use the formula we had before, p of x, xi, yj is equal to um, p of xi given yj multiplied by p of yj and then cancel the p of yj's, that tells you that uh, in this case here, the, the probability of x given y is equal to the probability of x. And that's exactly what you want. In, if they're independent, then um, knowing y doesn't tell you anything about x. There's no relationship between x and y. In that case, we can substitute, um, we can substitute into the uh, formula. So again, I haven't done all the steps of this calculation. Uh, it would be worth your while going through it uh, quickly. But what you do is you take the, um, in the bottom line, you see uh, p of x comma y, you replace that by p of x multiplied by p of y, and the log of p of x given y, that just becomes uh, p of x. So you get um, the log of p of x multiplied, well, uh, weighted by or being pre-multiplied by uh, p of uh, x multiplied by p of y. Uh, and then the, the, the p, the, the, that's the only, the, that in that sort of term at the front, that's the only place the p of y occurs. So you can sum out the p of y, the sum of p of y, summed over y is one, so probability distribution, and what you're left with is minus p of x log of p of x, which is uh, h of x. So the um, amount of information on average uh, in x, when you know y, is equal to the amount of information in x if x and y are independent, which is just what you want. If uh, x and y are independent, knowing y is not going to tell you anything about x, and so uh, h of x given y is indeed equal to h of x. This is the converse case uh, where uh, x is determined by y. So that, that's, this is the case where when you know y, uh, you know what x, uh, x is. There's no further information in, in x if you already know y. Uh, so one example of that would be if um, 
X and Y have the same size of outcome space. So X, I, and Y, J both, uh, X and Y both have N possible outcomes. And uh, in this particular example of X being determined Y, say that only the diagonal outcomes um, occur. So the possible outcomes are these pairs, X, J, comma, Y, I, where J and I both go from you know, one to, to N. Uh, but we're saying in this, in this case here, X is determined by Y in such a way that the only outcome that's possible uh, are, are the ones of the form xi comma yj. So the, sorry, xi comma yi. So the xj comma yi uh, cases don't occur unless j is equal to i. In other words, um, the condition, conditional probabilities of zero for p of xj yi, unless, um, unless the uh, xj is equal to xi. Uh, in which case it's one that has to happen. So this is um, the case where when you know yi, you know what uh, the value of x has to be, it has to be equal to xi. It can't be any of the other uh, xj's. And in this case, if you substitute uh, into the formula for the conditional probability, again, you've got lots of zeros and lots of ones, and you find that the uh, conditional probability is zero. So this is the case where when you know y, you know what x has to be, so there is no information remaining in the x variable once you know the y variable. And indeed, if you do the calculation, you find that h of x given y is equal to zero. So this is, is, is I mean, these are the properties you'd hope the conditional probability would, uh, entropy would have, uh, given the interpretation we have in it. Uh, if, you, if knowing y doesn't tell you anything about x, then h of x given y is equal to h of x. If knowing y tells you what x is, then h of x given y is equal to zero. So we'll just do um, the simple example that we were doing before again. So in this case here, uh, this is the table. We already worked out the two condition probabilities. H of x, y equals y zero is one. H of x, y equals y one is zero. And uh, we can easily work out the uh, marginal distribution. Uh, that's fairly straightforward. Uh, the y zero um, happens half the time. The y one happens half the time. Y0 happens half the time because a quarter of the time you get Y0, y, X0, a quarter of the time you get Y0, uh, X1, because that's half the time. Um, and so the conditional um, entropy is uh, a half. That's the probability that Y is equal to Y0 multiplied by 1, which is the entropy uh, of X given that Y is equal to Y0. And then the other bit is a half multiplied by 0 because the other entropy is 0, uh, and you get a half. So in other words, the... Um, the conditional entropy h of x given y is a half. Uh, out of interest, let's work out uh, h of x. So we can marginalize um, the distribution to give the distribution in x. So in this case, the probability of getting x0, well, uh, one possibility is that you get y, x0, y0, and that happens a quarter of the time. The other possibility is that you get x0, y1, that happens half the time. And so three quarters of the time you get uh, x0, quarter of the time you get x1. So that's the marginal distribution. Substitute that in the usual way into the um, formula for Shannon's entropy, and we find the entropy in the um, in this case is 0 0.81. Uh, well, what do you notice? You notice that h of x given y is less than h of x. So that's interesting. If you if you recall, um, h of x given y equals y zero is one, and h of x given y equals y one is zero. So um, knowing y can increase the entropy in x or um, decrease it. If we worked out that, so the entropy in x is x equals, is equal to 0.81. But if we found out that y was equal to y zero, the entropy in x would actually go up. It becomes one. But if we found out that y was equal, uh, equal to y one, the entropy in x would go down, it would go down to zero. So work in the joint distribution, uh, learning about the value of one of the variables can increase or decrease the, uh, uncertainty in, in the other variable. But on average, uh, uh, in fact, so th this is just reporting on, on the case that we did. Um, h of x given y, h of x given y was a half, h of x was 0 0.81. Uh, and this is the general um, truth that h of x given y is less than h of x. In other words, on average, uh, knowing the value of y will decrease the entropy of x even though in uh, particular, um, for particular values of y, it might increase it. On average, when you know y, uh, x 
can only become more uncertain. Sometimes it doesn't become more uncertain if X and Y are independent, but, um, but it can't become more uncertain. Did I say that right? So uh, sometimes for particular values, it beca can become more uncertain, but on average, um, it becomes less uncertain. In the independent case, the amount of uncertainty stays the same. Uh, I feel I'm neighboring this now, but, but it's an important uh, result. Uh, so I'll say it one last time. Uh, on average, the information in X goes down if you know the value of another variable Y. Uh, finally, the chain rule. Uh, this is a, a very useful result and will be important when we're looking at the mutual information uh, in the next lecture. Very quickly, uh, th this goes back again to the, um, the uh, definition of the conditional uh, probability. So the joint uh, probability is equal to the conditional probability multiplied by the marginal probability. Sorry, I missed the brackets there. So P of X comma Y is P of X given Y multiplied by P of Y. If we substitute that thing into, <coughs> into the uh, definition of Shannon's entropy. So uh, again, I, I'll, I'll leave this for you to do yourself, but you can imagine that where in the log term we have the P of X comma Y, we substitute in P of X given Y by P of Y. Then we have the, the log term of um, two things multiplied by each other. So you get the sum of two logs. Uh, then you mess around a little bit with the X and Y. In, in one case, you can uh, sum out the, the, the Y variable um, to give you the marginal distribution. And so basically, as I said, you go from the log of P of X comma Y to the log of P of X given Y plus the log of P of Y. Um, you, you, you're, you're a little bit careful with your um, sums and you end up with this formula here. Uh, H of X comma Y is equal to H of X plus uh, H of X given Y. So uh, that tells you that the amount of information in uh, X and Y together is the amount of information in X plus the amount of information in Y given that, that you know X. So you can see that that's the entropy version of the formula we started with, the um, formula for the conditional probability. Uh, but it's a very nice result and shows you how well these uh, definitions are working together. So once again, uh, this brings everything that we've been talking about so far together in one formula. The entropy of X and Y is the entropy in X plus the entropy in Y given that you know X. Cool. Thank you very much.